The top stories. Lime's purchase of flow is met with concern. Police warn about use of firearms after the latest shooting. And volleyballs to get new knockout champions. Welcome to Nation News for Thursday, November the 6th, 2014. No matter where you are in the world, at home or abroad, Nation News keeps you connected with what's happening in Barbados. Through our website, video newscast, and online e-papers. So stay connected with Nation News. Your news, your time, your way. The announcement that Cable and Wireless has reached a deal to buy fellow Caribbean telecoms providers flow has raised competition concerns. Another provider, Digicel, was quick to express its fears about what it calls on a level playing field as a result of the purchase. And Barbadian economist Avinash Pasod has urged Caribbean governments to block the proposed deal worth more than $3 billion between Cable and Wireless, which owns Lime, and Columbus International Flow's parent company. Mr. Pasod says the deal poses a major threat to competition in the Caribbean unless rigorous conditions on services are imposed. In its statement, Digital said it was not aware of all the details but hoped the company would be included in discussions surrounding the approval of the proposal. Cable and Wireless says the agreement will accelerate its growth strategy and improve both product offering and service delivery to customers in the Caribbean. Police are again expressing concern about the use of firearms to resolve the conflict in the wake of the most recent shooting incident. A 17-year-old is being treated at the QEH after sustaining a gunshot wound to his abdomen in an incident at Golden Rock, the Pine, around 2 o'clock in the morning. Acting Police Spokesman Station Sergeant Roland Cobblers called on members of the public to report anyone they know that has an illegal gun. The 10 members of a South District family who lost their homes to a fire last month will be provided with new ones. Donna Fraser and her mother Phyllis Bryan have been given the good news that several agencies, private companies and individuals have come together to help them rebuild. The announcement was made when a team from the Urban Development Commission, along with Patrick Tannis, who represents the Democratic Labour Party in the St. Michael Southeast constituency, visited the charred remains of the houses. You want to commence uh, with immediate effect the uh restoration of this home and you know we, we, we our hearts go out to the family here who has been affected not of their own volition I understand uh, but this family has uh, been unfortunately um, targeted by fate if that's how you want to call it but we as brothers and sisters of this family and fellow Barbadians we encourage you to come out and be a part of this process Barbadian teenagers Tiffany Lynch and Shane Aline won the Imperial Society of Teachers of Dance competition, which was held in Blackpool in Northern England. It's the first time a Barbadian couple has won the competition, and it is said to be rare for teenagers to outdance the more seasoned competitors to win in the under-35 adult Latin category. The duo returned to the island this week and share the experience with Nation News. Obviously it was painful because I hurt, I pulled my calf. So I was crying throughout the entire dance because the pain was building up. And then at the very end, I have to get helped off the stage. So it was pretty painful, but I guess in the end, I overcame it and we won. So I'm pretty happy for that. The pair of dancers will be flying out again in December to compete in the World Championships in Paris. Good luck to them. With Ebola very much in the news, there can be confusion about what is the difference between putting victims in isolation or in quarantine. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Heather Armstrong has been explaining what each means to a public forum. When we say quarantine, we're going to quarantine someone. The person is not showing any symptoms. They may have been a contact of someone who has been identified to have Ebola virus disease or they have been in a situation where there's a possibility they could have been infected. So when you're under quarantine, you're not sick. We're just observing you. So in the quarantine process, we will be 
taking temperatures, all right, to make sure that there's no development of a fever, because those are one of the signs or symptoms of, of Ebola virus disease. So you're not sick when you're under quarantine. When you become sick, that is when we isolate you, or we say you're in isolation. British High Commissioner Victoria Dean has presented the Irving Wilson School for Visually Impaired Children with a check for $2,500, a laptop and desktop computer, and a television. The High Commission has been assisting the school for the past four years, and Ms. Dean said this year's donation came from a range of fundraising efforts. We made some money from our recycling efforts, um, which, we, which we really try to encourage, and I know you're very keen on recycling here at the school as well. We made some money from a charity raffle, and from some individual donations, and from a coin collection. And I'm really delighted that in putting all of that together, we raised around $2,500, which we were able to give you today. In sport. Two new champions will be crowned when the Goddard Enterprises Limited Senior Volleyball Knockout Finals climb up on Sunday at the Wildy Gymnasium. Men's champions Chargers did not take part this year and women's 2013 winners Floor Century Brokers Deacons were sent packing on Wednesday night when they lost to Bryden's Rockets in the semifinals. And finally, how does it feel to be unloved? and unmissed. Pity the poor, humble, one cent coin. It's six months now since the central bank stopped issuing them and it seems no one has missed them. Unloved and unmissed. And that's Nation News for Thursday. For more, log on to nationnews.com as well as YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. And get your weekend nation on Friday.